So today we'll be going over the concepts of normal strain as well as shear strain, much like um, the normal and shear stress. Now when it comes to normal strain, so let's say we have this cylinder and for this cylinder we have an external force actually pulling it upwards in tension with some force F here. Now in reality this object will actually deform by some amount. Now keep in mind in reality this deformation usually is not very um, noticeable. However in these drawings I am exaggerating just for reference as an example. So we see that this cylinder did change its length and let's call it delta L, the change of length. Now originally let's call this L not or L0 this would be the original length of the cylinder and then it was pulled or stretched to a final length LF here and the the deformation how much it deformed or changed in length would be delta L so normal strain is denoted by epsilon normal strain is equal to the change in length divided by the original length. So in other words, it's essentially a ratio. Um, if you multiply it by 100, you get the percentage that it actually deformed. Now, if you want to write this out a little bit further, the change in length is essentially the final length minus the original length divided by the original length. And so this is going to be the equation for your normal strain. Now normal stress and strain actually does have a relationship going back to material science um, class when we saw the stress and st stress versus strain diagram. So having the stress versus strain diagram stress is on the y-axis while on the x-axis we have the strain we get this kind of diagram when it comes to the the material or an object deforming and we see the initial segment from here, from the starting point to here, we have a linear relationship of strain, of stress versus strain. So we see that the rise is the stress and the run is strain. And this slope here is known as Young's modulus or the modulus of elasticity. Um, this is also known as Huck's law. So we have stress is equal to Young's modulus times strain or you could just write um, stress rise over run is equal to this slope which is E and so going back to the material science course this is the kind of relationship you get and so strain is in fact related to stress and vice versa so that's one thing to keep in mind and another thing just for review we remember that this is known as the region of of elastic deformation while the rest of the region is where the material actually plastically deforms or permanently deforms in this sec section. So we always in engineering want to keep the the stress strain level within this within this segment that has a linear relationship because it's very easy to make predictions on the behavior. And of course we're trying to avoid that permanent deformation. So let's go ahead and do an example on normal strain. So for this problem, we actually have two wires here hanging and attached at point A and each has a length of 400 millimeters. And right here, the problem statement is if the force P causes point A to be displaced vertically three millimeters, determine the normal strain in each of the wires. So we see we have a force pulling it down. The original location of these two wires was point A, but then with this, with this force it deformed both of the wires and now the final position is A prime and the displacement of those two points is three millimeters and we're being asked to solve for the normal strain in each of the wire. So we know that strain is equal to the the change in length divided by the original length or we could also write it the final length take away the original length divided by original length. So we're supposed to find it for each of the wires. Now since we see that this um, is symmetric, we know that one wire is going to be the deformed the exact same amount as the other. So all we have to do is solve the strain of one of the wires, which gives us the, the strain in both of the wires because they deform the exact same amount. Now, 
we see that this problem is only going to be involving trig. So we have the original length of 400 millimeters here. And now since this is going to be symmetric, we could actually solve for this length here, which is basically 400 times sine theta. And we know the angle theta is 30 degrees. So having this, we have this length over here the original length and now let's go ahead and calculate um, this so this length of the triangle is 400 cosine theta this length is 400 sine theta and we know the this 400 is the original length now the final length that we're trying to solve for is the this dashed line this will be the final length so now let's go ahead and just um, focus on the larger triangle here so we have this length 400 cosine theta and we have this length but now when it comes to the new triangle that we're drawing which is from this point down to a prime attached to this attachment point here we see the length is 400 cosine theta plus this additional length here which is 3 millimeters so we have this total length here of this triangle and we have and this remains the same 400 sine theta all that's left is using pythagorean theorem to find the final length let me go ahead and draw that separate triangle out just to just to clarify it so here drawing the larger triangle we see that this length is 400 sine theta this portion here is 400 cosine 30 degrees and then we have this three millimeters that it deformed to and then all we have to do is solve for the final length using pythagorean theorem so we get the final length of 400 and 2.6 millimeters and we know the original length was 400 so that change in length is 402.6 take away 400 millimeters divide by the original length which is 400 now one thing to know as you could tell the units will cancel out so this is unitless which is why i mentioned previously it's a ratio or the percentage of how much it deformed so the normal strain for each wire is 0 0.0065 millimeters per millimeter. If you want to keep the, the units here, basically for every millimeter of the original length, it deformed 0 0.0065 millimeters. Or in terms of a percentage, it deformed 0.65% of its original length. Now for shear strain, it's a little bit different. So let's go ahead and analyze a plate element. Now what I mean by a plate element is we're analyzing a very small portion of an object. We're basically dividing an object into smaller elements and basically analyzing each of those elements um, separately. And so that's what a plate element is. You're basically taking a small portion of an object, removing it from its surroundings, and basically just analyzing that element alone. And let's say we have a plate element that actually um, deforms in such a way. So right here, we're seeing the original shape. However, due to any external forces, it actually deforms in this manner. So we see here the original shape was a, a square, but now it deformed where there's actually, um, it's slanted a bit and we see that it actually in a way rotated this angle and let's call this angle gamma here. So there was some rotation in this plate element once it started deforming and this um, gamma here is what we call Gamma is shear deformation. And so the shear deformation or the shear strain here is actually just this angle gamma, which you could usually just solve by um, trigonometry. So for, exam uh, so for a simple example here, um, let's say we have this square object here and we have a force being exerted at point A and we have this height of 300 millimeters. Now once it deforms, we see it becomes this shape here and it deforms by 1.5 millimeters from the original position and this is now called 
a prime. So now the shear strain here would essentially be um, using trig, you could just do the tangent inverse of 1.5 millimeters divided by 300, which gives us 1.5 to 1 degrees. But one thing to keep note is shear strain is always done in the unit in radians, not degrees. So we just convert it to radians, which is equal to 0 0.05 radians. So this is the shear strain in this particular example. So now let's do a little bit more involved example here. So this problem statement says the rectangular plate was deformed into a parallelogram as shown here. Determine the shear strain at corners A and B. So one thing to keep in mind is the um, the shear strain essentially is the change in angle. We're asked in specific points. Now in this case, we're being asked the shear strain at point A. So the change in angle before it was an original rectangle. Now it's essentially going to be, let me go ahead, the strain at corner A is equal to the change in angle. So it's originally 90 degrees, take away theta. A. This is going to be the shear strain for A. Now for the shear strain at B, we notice that this angle, theta B, is actually going to be greater than 90 degrees. So the shear strain at B is equal to 90 degrees, which is the original shape, minus theta B, and we see this is going to be a negative number. So one thing um, that's important, um, whenever the change in angle, when the angle of a corner decreases, that's when shear strain is positive. However, when the angle of a specific corner increases, that's when the shear strain is going to be negative. So the rest of the things we're given, we have point A, point B, point C. We have the original dimensions of the square, which is 400 millimeters. The high is 300 millimeters. And we see a deformation here, 5 millimeters here, 5 millimeters here. Now, to be able to determine these angles, there's nothing more than trig, right? We could go ahead and solve for this angle. Let's call this angle beta. And then solve for this angle here. Let's call this alpha. And keep in mind, alpha is also over here. This is alpha as well. And we see that this portion of the angle is also beta. So we need to solve the angles for alpha, beta, such that we're, such that we're able to determine alpha, theta A and theta B here. So we see alpha, we could use tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, and the tangent inverse to find the angle alpha is tangent inverse 5 divided by 400, which gives us this angle. Now similarly for the angle beta, we have tangent inverse 5 divided by 300, which gives us 0 0.9548 degrees. Now with this information, alpha and beta, we're actually able to determine theta A and theta B. B, theta A is equal to 90 degrees, which was its original angle, but we subtract alpha and we subtract beta. So theta A gives us 88.3289. And now theta B is equal to 90. In this case, we add alpha and we also add beta because the angle actually increased, which gives us 91.6709 degrees. Now finally, we could actually solve for the shear strain at point A and point B using these equations here. So the shear strain at A is positive 0 0.02916 radians and the shear strain at B is negative point um, 0 0.02916 here. Keep in mind, always convert the degrees into radians because this is how we write the shear strain. And so this is how you solve for the normal and shear strain.